Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Matthew. I'll be the host today and really appreciate you coming on time to uh, the webinar today. It's all about accelerating your growth. And so today is specifically for businesses who want who are in the software and SaaS companies and they want to understand strategically how to go about driving their marketing. Now, just to provide you with a bit of context and uh, a bit of framework here, uh, we have had, um, we've generated more than a thousand leads for businesses across a broad range of uh, areas. If you want to put in the, your area of expertise in relation to your industry or what you do, if you want to frame it like a we help X to do Y through Z, stick that in the in the Q and A box. And I've got that open here, and I'll see if I can weave some of what you do into the presentation, just so we can make sure that it's really relevant for you. Now, today is all about making sure that uh, the delivery exchange, we want to make sure that you're really getting some high value. So can I just get a quick um, yes, please, uh, for that you can see me, hear me, and see my screen. So you can see my uh, web, you can see my um, screen, which is free webinar, Accelerate Your Growth. So yes, you can see that screen. Yes, you can hear me. And yes, uh, you can hear me. So three yes, 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 please, just to make sure all three boxes and, and uh, are covered there. Um, we won't necessarily be taking questions. Um, somebody's got their hand up, but just in the Q&A box, not the chat box, uh, the Q&A. G'day, Nathan. Good to see you again. Uh, congratulations on being nominated uh, 40 under 40. Um, you know, the good old, uh, good old LinkedIn stalk. Uh, it comes up in my feed. And, and ladies and gentlemen, so let's just start with that. Um, I've met Nathan a couple of years ago. Uh, he, does, he has a, a really interesting business, but what he's really good at is posting stuff online and informing the market, and he takes people on their on his journey. And what that is, what that tells me is, and what that should tell you is the, the the content that you put out there. The the main ways that we generate interest in our business, the main ways we generate uh, interest in our customers' businesses by posting through free channels. So thanks very much for coming here, Nathan. You've already uh, proven one of my points, maybe. Um, thank you, Trace. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. So you can hear me, see me, and see my presentation. Let's get on with the show. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is go through the agenda. If you've been to one of my webinars before, you'll know that um, I've got a format and a structure. I'm going to uh, break away from that a little bit today. Uh, the the idea was to be as strategic as I could, uh, as I can, give you the overall ideas. But as I said in the intro, we're going to also dive into some of the tactical uh, pieces. And, uh, and, and just my own experiences, what I'm seeing with more than a dozen or so, maybe 15 companies that we work with in our group, uh, generating thousands of leads, helping those businesses close millions of dollars worth of work. Uh, and it's all because the, some, sometimes it's strategy, sometimes it's just marketing, sometimes it is uh, just helping the salesperson reframe an idea and position it in the customer's mind. So what I want you to do is think about this from a point of view of, you know, overall the front end. So my best customers, the people that get the most value from working with Tech Talk, are the ones that are having a, a great product at the moment. I guess great products are table stakes these days, useful, user friendly, that type of thing. They've got a great product. They know how to deliver it, and now it's time to focus on the front end of the business, the sale, the strategic sales and marketing execution piece. So um, that's where I'm coming from. Operations, I said to a person the other day, um, even if the bucket's leaky, um, if we can put more uh, water into the top of it, we're still going to overall have a net gain. Uh, because So that, that's my prejudice is showing. If you're an operator, an operations person, you're probably you know waving your fist at the screen at the moment. Um, and I totally get it. Very important role. Uh, that is not my role. That's not what we're here to talk about today. It's all about front end. And, uh, and positioning yourself for, for success. So let's dive in. Um, uh, we've got, right, so today's agenda, I'm gonna talk about the four key areas of impact. So there's four areas that I talk about a lot. If you've joined one of my webinars before, great, you know uh, some of what they are, but at the same time, I'm gonna reposition them, give you a little bit of a nuance, uh, a little bit more detail on that. And really, when it comes to sales and marketing, strategically thinking, uh, I'm reading a new book at the moment. Um, I'm doing a, a doing a webinar, a, a, a podcast uh, called "The CEO and the Salesman." I'm the salesman. I interview CEOs, and in that, uh, we're talking about um, strategy. And he's a VC guy, and he's you know listed a company on the ASX and and had uh, um, incredible success. He now mentors other businesses, and I said, "Well, what's the what's the one book I should read?" I spoke with him on Monday, and uh, you know he gave me. 
you gave me this book, Playing to Win, How Strategy Really Works. Um, and it's not really supposed to be a book review, but it's just top of my mind. So strategy, what they say in the book, is a series of decisions. And those decisions are also, when you make a decision, comes from the root of incision or cut away. So we want to say, well, we're doing this. We're not doing all these other things. Okay. And so I want you to think about what are the decisions and what uh, what conscious decisions have you made about your strategy that when an opportunity comes, you need to put it through a certain set of filters that allows you to make a, a, an informed choice so you can stay the path. There's lots of opportunities. There is unlimited opportunities in the world. You've got to make sure you're sticking to your own personal version of that. And consultants like me or my friends, uh, we have lots of ideas, uh, but it might not necessarily be the right one for your business. Okay, so the four areas of impact. Uh, we're going to talk about why most get targeting wrong. So target market. Um, people are, oh, well, target market, name, rank, and serial number. Obviously, I'm going to talk more about that as we go along. And and how, and then also, not just going to say how you get it wrong, but how to fix it. Um, in, especially in SaaS world, why free trials don't work. Uh, if anybody here is in the SaaS world, they uh, often will give out free trials. And uh, it's sort of the, the person creates a free trial. You look at the logistics, look at the the data in the back end, and find that after a day or so, the enthusiasm falls off a cliff, and uh, people don't use their product. And I've certainly worked and mentored SaaS businesses who've positioned themselves as SaaS and try to help them change the way that they think about their go-to-market um, strategy and how they are going to provide value to their clients early on in the piece. And just in relation to that, so that free trial bit could be. Um, not free proposal, I'm not saying don't provide proposals, but 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 analysis to determine whether the product is worth it or not. I've got a client uh, who's become a friend who uh, they hadn't really made a lot of sales in the last couple of years. What we've done is we've, uh, we've, we've changed the strategy of selling and just in doing that, they've been able to engage a number of new customers, sign one off, which is you know more than a million dollars. And then I've got another couple in the pipeline, totaling a couple of million dollars worth of business um from just changing the strategy so nothing the product didn't change uh the ideas didn't change the strategy changed and how we're going to sell it and they moved away from doing a lot of front end stuff trying to service the customer and help them to changing the conversation and getting the customer to to come forward put a shot across the bow of procurement understand what's what's actually going on there and it's something that i talk about quite often uh, when it comes to um to software businesses and SaaS businesses and how they position themselves in the market and the last one is some free and paid lead generation. People want to know what's the best, how to do it, what are we doing? I'll show you. I'll show you the exact funnel we're going to use. We use for almost every client. I'll show you some results. Um, my goal is to give you as much info as possible. Obviously, I can't. I don't want to break confidence with clients because we we're doing this. We're operating every single day in, as I said, a dozen or more businesses. Uh, but you know, I want to give you some ideas on how you can go ahead and 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 start putting out some free and paid legion. And by the way, it doesn't always have to be paid, okay? It doesn't always have to be paid. I want to say that. So throughout this year, I've run a few paid campaigns, but my most successful campaigns are my content campaigns. When I'm out there, I'm putting videos out. People who follow me online, uh, you will see that there's uh, you know, there's videos of me talking in front of my uh, my logo wall. There's videos of me being interviewed by people from overseas. There's videos and, and conversation because I how I measure the value of that free content I put out there is does my customer care? Not just putting a a logo up and you know that sort of stuff. It is does my will my customer enjoy this content? Does somebody could it possibly be shared with somebody who went uh, throughout the process? I was listening to or uh, watching a, an interview with the CEO of uh, Instagram and the most important thing that they measure to promote a post, write this down if you're on Instagram and you want to get more followers, the most important metric they measure is, is how many times that's been shared in messages. Not likes, not comments. Likes and comments are important, but the most, the, the, the top of the tree is shares. And you'll know if you've ever sent your friend a, a reel on Instagram, you'll know for a fact, like I, my son's in basketball, I sent him a basketball training video. The next little while, I've just got basketball training video after video after video, right? So that is the most important metric on Instagram. Now, each platform has its own nuance. And that's why you need to have experts who understand TikTok, 
Insta, LinkedIn, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever else might be, um, you know, whatever those whatever those uh, channels might be to market. So anyway, we'll get into that as well. So let's start with the four areas of impact. And the four areas of impact, if you join one of my webinars before, you can sing along almost, uh, but they are, first of all, your target market, getting targeting right, okay? So the first thing is identifying your best fit clients. Now, uh, and I'll, t I'll break that down for you um, uh, really clearly in the next section because we talk about that. Your circle of influence, I talk about that also today because, uh, you know, and, uh, obscurity is the enemy. The more people that know about you, the better. And never in the world has there been a greater opportunity to let more people know about you than the free the free channel of the market that your phone is or your all of these social media is. Doesn't matter how conservative or or whatever you think your market is, you can get you can let them know about what you do, and you need to do it in a way they go. This is interesting and potentially shareable. So put in your mind: is this shareable, or am I just positioning myself to, you know? A, to, to tell people that I exist. The third part is your relationship, building out a relationship with these people, making sure that there is a, um, a clear understanding that you're like them, you're helping people like them, and maybe you can help them as well. And you do that through insights and thought leadership. You do that through understanding the customer, not just at a high level, but at a deep level, really understand their problems. And then you can help, you come from a point of trying to help. That's why I produce so much content out there that seriously, if people just followed along with what I tell or to what I talk about and the content that I put out and the white papers I have, the you know, the WROI and marketing, I've got that for free. I've got the Australian Technology Marketing Blueprint. Literally, I've got a blueprint on how to do marketing in Australia. I've also got how to do case studies. That's all free out there. Um, the idea is to help you sell more to the right people. And then when people want me to do stuff, want my business to, to execute, that's when we get paid. And your offer. You've got to ask people to buy. You've got to ask people to engage somehow. How do you get your customers to say, put their hand up and say, yes, I want to know more about that. So that's important. So they're the four key areas. And you, I'd like you to think about and have a genuine think about just uh, now even, what have I done this month? We're almost at the end of this month. What have I done this month to make sure I more clearly understand my target market, build my circle of influence, number of followers, number of people who know what I do and who and what I and who I help? Have I what have I done to build my relationship with the people in my database, on social, whatever the platform might be? And have I made an offer? Have I asked people to buy this month? Or am I just putting out a bunch of content? Because this happens a lot. Content, 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 lots of good stuff. Even Gary Vaynerchuk, who's the you know the godfather of content marketing, uh, who puts out well, two hundred and fifty pieces of content per week. Um, so does Alex Hamozzi, who's uh, both of those guys are uh, are billionaires or very very close, and they've used social advertising and free content as their path to market. But they both put out about two hundred and fifty pieces of content a week, but they still ask people to buy. Gary V wrote a book called Jab 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 Right Hook, Jab 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 Give Give Give. Right hook, ask. So how have you asked your customers to buy this month? Engage with your business, download a thing, join a webinar, whatever it might be, you need to make sure that you're asking people to engage with your business in some way. Okay, well, that's the four impact areas. Now let's get into how most get targeting wrong. This is where most people start with targeting. They go, oh, well, we speak with people in this industry of this size and this location. You know, we, we help logistics businesses uh, with 500 employees. That's how most people do targeting. And often the messages fall flat. Often the communication doesn't really work. Often the, the challenge is it seems too generic. And what I'd like you to do is now add on the other side of this name, rank, and serial number to the, the psychographic, who they are. Because sales and business and marketing, that whole front-end piece you might think that you sell B2B. You might think that you sell B2C, to business to business or business to customer. Most of my customers, actually all of my customers are B2B. But actually, and even you hear me have a problem say even saying that because I talk about B, uh, I talk about H to H, human to human. A business can't sign a contract. A business can't transfer money. A human can. 
A, a business can't sign a purchase order. You put out an RFP or somebody, you respond to an RFP, a re request for a proposal, you respond to a tender. There's still a human. There's still a human at the end of that making a judgment call. And what's that judgment call going to be based on? Yes, you've got a whole bunch of things that you can do, but if you're in a bake-off world, then there's going to be other people similar to you. I'm sorry, but there is. There's other marketing agencies out there. I'm not delusional to think there's not uh, that, that do this. But what we need to think about is how do we get that, how do we make sure that person really connects with our business and choosing our proposal, working to work with us than others. And we need to understand the role and the person that we're dealing with. So the role and the best way to understand a role, and if you've been in a webinar of mine, you'd know this already, is understand the role of the person that you engage with, then go find their job description on Seek. You know, if you're dealing with engineers in a mining company, you're dealing with project managers at an airport, look up project manager airport, you'll find a job description, and then you'll know exactly how they're measured. The, the internet's out there, the info's out there. The world will tell you. Even use ChatGPT. I, I don't use any ChatGPT to put content out because, well, I think that a, currently a human can do it better. But boy, oh boy, I've used a lot of ChatGPT to build standard operating procedures in my business, help onboarding processes, understand roles in a business. So if I'm selling to engineers, how are engineers? Just write in. How, you know, figure out your target, my customer, then go to ChatGPT and go, how are they measured? What's their education level like? And all those types of things. And then, of course, Look at Seek as well or, or whatever job platform you're looking at. You need to understand the person. And understanding the person, you can understand then the business's values. Okay, so understand uh, and, and also their behavior. Values and behavior. Yes, they're psycho, they're, they're sort of they're the personal part, but also that's the human part. Industry, size, and location are not the human part. Role, values, and behavior are the human part. They're the ones signing the contract. They're the ones deciding to have coffee with you or do work with you. And those are the things we need to think about in relation to targeting. A friend of mine was, um, well, I say friend, but a client who became a friend, uh, he did the first season with me um, on the CEO on the Salesman podcast. Um, we, I, I was doing a workshop for him's business. He flew all the senior management to Sydney. I flew to, he flew me to Sydney as well. We spent a, a day or so in rooms. And, uh, and we, we were talking about this targeting piece. We we're going through it. I was working through scripts. And, and what was revealed and what was, became really obvious is the best customers for them were the ones that were growing. So we went industry, size, and location. We know that. Role, values, and behavior. And then we added in what's their, how is their business operating? Because they solved a problem. Because everybody's solving the problem that you've got in some way, whether it's a human solution or using spreadsheets or jotting stuff down and on the back of their hand, what, they're already solving the problem. Because if it was a real problem, that they have to solve it in their business. So they're solving it now. The way your solution solves it is differently, you know, better, faster, cheaper, more elegantly, smarter, whatever it might be, more data-driven. Oh, there's a thousand different new nuances on that. But what I want you to think about is, how they, if they're currently solving it, they've been doing it for five years and they're not growing, there's no real motivation to change to a new system. You might say that they can save X percentage, but there's a, there's, there was a quote I saw on LinkedIn a little while ago from a CFO saying, if all the software packages were able to save me as much money as they promised, I'd make money just off buying software packages. So nobody believes you when you say you can save 30%. So you need to be able to position it differently. Well, certainly CFOs don't anyway, because they've heard it, they've heard it a hundred times before. So if you're growing, if they're growing, you can then have them understand that the size of the problem now is only going to get bigger. Then you've got an opportunity to make a sale because the value exchange occurs in a sale after the purchase, after they made the decision. So you've got to figure out how to do that. Okay. So I wanted to really sort of talk about this. This is an exact screenshot from one of my clients. Um, this is specific to them. Don't use this, but I want to get you understanding of this is a, what, what makes an enterprise best fit. Let's talk about values and behavior, not, you know, location, size, that type of thing. Companies looking for growth efficient inefficiencies have organization structure to physics. This is literally my typing. If there's spelling mistakes in there, just know I'm a Salesperson, I'm a, I'm a consultant, not a, not a copywriter. Um, leaders with a vision and willing to put it in place. Leaders who have a growth mindset, have an internal champion and system owner. 
These are the types of things that, so now when their salesperson talks to uh, people, they go, well, what do you guys do? Of course, they know the general industry they're in or they, you know, so how do you guys help? We say, well, our best clients are ones that have leaders with a growth mindset. They want to drive change using data. They recognize the value of having an internal champion of the system and they're going to put that person in place to make sure this particular strategy is a success. Well, our clients are really looking for growth and they're going to do that through efficiencies. It's a way different conversation than saying we've got a software package that integrates with stuff and talks to this and does this. So what we want to do is create your business as an aspirational uh, product based on values rather than features. Because features, somebody else at a lower price point can, can beat you on a lot of the time. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. But, you, so, but if you position with values, this is why your competitors who have a worse product um, and charge more are probably winning deals because they understand values and behavior. So how do we build that out? Now, once you've understood all that, then you can go organization names, what do they have in common? You know, vertical size, location, complexity. You might also, I put in here problem. So what was the problem that they had before coming along and meeting you? Don't talk about the business as it stands today because they've been a customer of yours for two years. That's not interesting. That's not helping you make your sale. You need to understand their mental position, their, their world before they bought from you. Because you that's where you care, that's what you care about before they bought from you. I know as a product person, as a software person, you care that they're getting great value, but you need to get the customer and you need to think about what they were before the purchase, what problems, what issues, what was existing in the marketplace at that point before they bought from you. Because then you can then you can extrapolate on that. You can expand on those issues and then go to market with a with a deep understanding of the issues that exist and understanding that that's when marketing really starts to hit the number, hit, really starts to hit the nail on the head. Why do they choose you? Technology, service, reputation. Uh, referrals are fine answer, but really referrals, there's a lot of businesses I come across in the, in the wilderness area, I call it, where they've exhausted their referrals, they've exhausted their friends and family. They've got to a point, a couple of million bucks a year. Um, and then now they go, well, how do I get to there? How do I move to the next part? And referral is is not your path uh, referrals actually are a good source of leads i get referrals i'm working with customers right now on referrals uh, who've come from referrals but that is not a that is not a um a channel that i can just switch on i can just turn i need more referrals this month there's no button for me to push whereas with content whereas with advertising with other strategies i'm going to talk about today i can i can just turn it on um the idea is you don't always want to leave the tap on like in your house you know you've got water when you want it, only turn it on when you need it. So that's the idea and goal of, of how we think about marketing and growth. Events that trigger the need. You need to map this stuff out. Was there a change of legislation? Was there a change of ownership? Was a company bought or sold? Was there a new matter? Was it was there something happened in the marketplace? Competitors and of course vulnerabilities, where I get real, real. Where, where are my vulnerabilities right now? Okay. That's the top level of why targeting, why most people get targeting wrong because they don't go deep enough understanding that. Third thing today, we're ripping through this. Hey, by the way, if anybody's got any questions, um, I am. I will keep an eye on the question box. Uh, can we get a copy of the slides? Yes. Um, there you go, there's a question and an answer. <laughs> so um, you're in as an anonymous attendee. I don't know who you are, but um, just send me an email, matthew at techtalk.com.au. Uh, and I'll, I'll kick them over to you. No worries at all. Third thing is why free trials don't work. And I know that most SaaS businesses want to do a free trial. It feels like it's easy. Well, let me tell you, there is an inverse, there, there, sorry, there's a direct correlation. If you think about a sales funnel, sales funnel at the top, people don't even know they've got a problem all the way at the bottom. They're going to make a choice, right? At the top, if you're putting marketing out there, I don't even know if I've got a problem. And if I don't know if I've got a problem or I'm sort of problem aware or solution solution aware, but it's being dealt with and who cares? And you know, you as a, as a, as a well-meaning uh, a product owner, business owner, or salesperson, you go out there and go, but, but I can help you save this and do that. And here's my free trial. The problem with that is they're not sitting around waiting. So the real reason most free trials fail or proof of concept is they fail is because of the time and effort involved. 
unless your solution takes less than 10 minutes to set up and use, your free trial or proof of concept will fall flat because the customer is not engaged unless they're paying for it. If they're paying for a proof of concept or paying for a trial, then they've moved that from the entertainment world, well, yeah, maybe I'll look at it, to execution. But free trials work amazingly. Oh, but Matthew, what about, what about Canva? I can go on Canva right now and get massive amounts of value very, very quickly for zero dollars forever. So, um, uh, so it's a your product needs to be way more simple and as simple as that Trello, Canva, Jira. You know, you it's visually, uh, I understand how to use this thing almost immediately. Um, whereas your free trial probably requires integrations, APIs, connecting to this, plugging that in, doing some of these ones over here, it becomes a difficult choice, a difficult task. And very few people are sitting around hoping to find a product they can spend hours on to determine whether or not they want to give you money. Simple as that. Um, John saying, what if the market leader you are compared to the most has grown on the back of a free version? Is your, If your product... If they have, then you can see what they've done. And if they've got a product that takes very little time to deliver, then you can do that. If they, it's a really complex product, then they've probably done a really great job of understanding values and behavior. And they've done a really great job of engaging with the market. I'll talk to you in specifics, John, if you want to organize a conversation. There's, there's a couple of bonuses at the end. One of them is a conversation with me for nothing. I'm more than happy to talk you through that. It's just... Um, the market is not a single entity. There are people out there selling um, products for, you know, allowing products to exist out there for free, but there's also people will often join free and value. Okay. So if there's, if there's low price, then low value. There's lots of very expensive products out there that you, um, that, uh, that are probably not as good as yours as well. So the market is not a single entity. If you've come up against people like that, ask them what they're trying to achieve, and then you can work through that in the sales strategic part. Now I've got a couple of other questions here. Demo account sandbox. Um, it's too much effort. People aren't sitting around, mate, um, looking and hoping to spend time and money on you. You're a salesperson, Nathan. Go sell. Um, so unless they can design something themselves, I know what you do. Maybe they can design something themselves and they can play with. Maybe because they can feel good about it. But as long as it's got to be really easy, like drop and drag, that type of thing. Um, for uh, context, uh, okay, cool. Yep, John, let's have a conversation about that. Okay, let's carry on. So the right action at the right time. The right action at the right time. Here's that, here's that uh, sales funnel I was talking about, sort of preempted my own slides here. If I'm unaware of the problem, Give them light and breezy, easy to consume content. Listicles, blog posts, video, infographics. It's easy. It's a glance. You can put out lots of this. It doesn't cost much to put out that sort of stuff. And you can do it over and over and over until somebody goes, yeah, I will have a look at the five reasons why the graphic design market is in trouble in 2024. But that's top of funnel stuff, right? So think about the market at the bottom, at the bottom tip, right at that pointy end before it starts to expand back out. About one of one to three percent of the market are looking to buy something at any one time, but the rest of the world lives out there. So you want to engage with people at a high level, get them in your email system, get your in, get them in your ecosystem, start offering and delivering and, and demonstrating value to them through listicles and blogs and eBooks. And as you as they come down the funnel of interest, now they'll read an eBook. They might even look at a white paper or an analyst review. If you're in sort of a bit of a more of a technical world, they might engage with a podcast. They, they might uh, look at then as they keep going down, they'll get a bit more deep. They go use cases as they come down case studies. So use cases are how you would use a product. Case studies is how a specific person uses a product. Use cases are great for businesses that can't mention, can't name names. So if you sell to government or giant corporate and they don't like you using their name, just say how a large government entity used X, Y, and Z and achieved A, B, and C. Okay. Um, that's how you use use cases versus case studies. You can say, hey, how Service Australia achieved X by doing Y. Pilots, proposals, processes, contracts, demos exist at the bottom end of the funnel. Now, also, when we're talking, and I'm sort of going off script here, when we're talking about um, advertising and marketing, 
Facebook typically, tip because it's interruption marketing. I'm looking at dog videos. I'm looking at you know, looking at people complaining about the refs' decisions on the rugby last night, whatever it might be. You know, engaging with your friends, and then you see an advert. That's not an intent based, uh, intent based action. So you need to position yourself as more informational and value based. Whereas Google, you know, on you know, ERP systems for logistics businesses. Well, that's a very low in the funnel. That becomes a bake off. Then becomes so they're more interested, and more likely to want to engage with more, uh, more meaty content. So think about when you place your advert. What are you asking them to do, and where they are? Uh, are we asking them to take the right action at the right time, or, or are you taking the right action? So we probably should have at least one of these categories or one of these things in your funnel all the way along. Because if you don't, if you're trying to offer a case study to somebody who's unaware of the problem, it's too hard. Not going to do it. You're going to lose the opportunity. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, right. Conversion funnel. So here's how to think about your funnel. I know the previous funnel I showed you, everybody's seen that. Here's something that we present um, to, to clients, how we get them to think about the funnel. When you're unaware of the problem, what's the burning question? It's not really burning, but how can I tell if my business is operating at its full potential? And then the channel to answer that question is, Social blogs, industry forums, events, LinkedIn outreach, listicles, right? Light and breezy. And it gets deeper as you go down. So oh, I sort of understand the problem. So what's the burning? How much are inefficient processes and working around, workarounds really costing me? Hmm. I wonder if I, our business is operating at full potential. Light. Is it actually costing me money? A bit more deeply, I'll maybe read an ebook or look at a white paper or you know, I might attend a webinar. Then you know, as you go down to the seeking solutions, comparing, how does it, how does my solution stack up against alternatives? So maybe a bake-off, a uh, feature comparison, testimonials, case studies, that type of thing, sales calls. You want to get on the phone. Um, sorry, technology people, you, most times, most sales happen on the phone. Um, that's just, that's, that's, that's life. Um, then write down genuine ROI, proof of concept, guided trial. You can offer trials, guided trial, capability assessment, statement of work, contracts, those types of things. All of those things are sales items. Your contract should be a sales item. So I was working with a client who sent me their contract and it was about, it started off with all about the company, all about their own company, then um, like lots of stuff, and then the platform and why it was great and amazing. And right at the end, then it started to talk about the customer and their problems. That's not a sales document. So flip it over, you know, name it. Why XYZ company will, you know, will achieve A, B, and C by using D, E, and F product. What a great title to a proposal. Way more interesting than, you know, here's 25 reasons why we're amazing and you need our help. So even your contract is a sales document. Okay, fourth is paid and free lead generation. Um, any questions? I'm just going to check. Move on. Uh, love a good phone call. And I work on <laughs> um, great. I mean, if you if you love a good phone call and you work in IT, that's uh, that's fantastic. Well, unless you're being um, uh, facetious, and I totally get that. Most people, uh, certainly most people, don't want to uh, be bothered with the phone because you get a whole bunch of, well, it's a lot of time taken up. I have one customer, we generated five leads for them. And they flipped out. I said, these aren't, these aren't ready to buy leads. Um, so he was very, very um, terrified of being on the phone and, um, and and it didn't work out for him. So, uh, but you know, the, I did mention it, but that's life. Anyway, so paid and free lead gen, your circle of influence. So it goes back to the four, remember? Circle of influence, your circle of influence. Who, who do you know? So this is, the reason I got this here is the network effect, right? Who knows what you do? Who knows what you do? Okay, and I want you to make sure that your value statement is so clear. We help X to do Y through Z. Think about that now. Everybody who's here, we help X to do Y through Z. Um, so if you can articulate that really clearly, then your employees, your team, your contractors, your friends, somebody you meet at the bar can go, oh, you help software and technology companies sell more to the right people through strategy, sales, and marketing. Oh. John owns a technology business. Maybe you should talk to him. Oh, would you mind introducing me to John? I, I've literally had that conversation uh, at a bar. 
So who knows you knows what you do. Ted Turner, uh, if anybody's old enough to remember him, I read a book of uh, read a book about Ted about 10 years ago. Uh, Ted Turner, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. Uh, he inherited from his father two uh, billboards uh, that were in farmer's paddocks on the highway. That was the business that he inherited from his father. And he turned that into a national advertising business, radio business, and then eventually started CNN, uh, which um, you have to be living under a rock not to know that. He's now one of the biggest landholders in America worth multiple billions of dollars. And uh, uh, he talks about, you know, obviously you've got to do all the other things and advertise. You've got to get known. More people that know you, the better off. Here's an uncomfortable truth. The only reason you don't have enough sales is not enough people know about you. Um, not really sorry about that. That's a fact. So because if The Rock or Oprah or, I don't know, Conor McGregor decided, to, that's a weird reference point, uh, decided to go into business against you, to compete against you, they're going to beat you simply because of their ability to get the, the message out to way more people than you can. So you've got to start amplifying your message and get it out there in the marketplace. So here are the two main categories. Now there's 50 ways literally 50 ways, but the two main categories that work for us right now and our clients right now, one, post free content, educational blogs, videos, infographics, social media posts, eBooks, webinars, uh, and run paid ads. Uh, so search market, search engine marketing, social media ads, display ads, sponsored content. So the first question is, would my target customer really like this? Putting up a photo, if you're a florist, putting up a photo of a flower and going, you know, happy Friday. That's the, the days of that actually being useful have gone 15 years ago. Um, so, you know, I was helping a client uh, who who has in the marketing space and I was saying, well, how do we get more attention on those? Well, you know, they. Um, so for example, there's some video hooks. Nathan, I reckon you could use this. You're, you're the sort of person who would do this. Um, there's video hooks in Instagram where, um, like a bit of action happens in a cup, like the lady that jumps up and kicks the water bottle off the top of the um, the punching bag. Well, then cut that. Use cap cut in 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 um, uh, on your phone. Cut that. You then catch the bottle, and then talk about your thing. It grabs attention, and then you can you can collect that attention and use it. Uh, the, the the soccer guy falling over and rolling on the ground. You roll towards the camera. Cut it there. You roll towards the camera, and then you can pop up and talk about your product or service. There you go, Nathan. That's a challenge for you. Um, so, so it's about actually, is it interesting? Well, my customers really like it. It doesn't need to say buy my thing all the time, but it could just, it's just attention. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk just brought out a book called The um, Day Trading Attention. It is attention. The, the commodity that you want to be able to uh, uh, get the most of is attention. And you can do that with paid and um, free. It's paid just is able to use the algorithm. Free is using consistency. So you've got to, how to do that? You've got to know your buyer and their problems. So how do we do it? Here we go. Another one of my uh, favorite, because I, I even though I'm in sales and I, I do a lot of, you know, it's a lot of words. Also, I have a basis and a structure of these are the forms we're going to fill out. This is the structure we're going to go through. Take screenshots if you need to. So how did you get here? Tell your story. Um, industry problems you saw, how they're solved, how they fell short process you went through, the roadblocks along the way, and your solution. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because the next slide is so incredibly dense. To take a screenshot of this, think about it. Want to talk to me later, that's fine. The next the next um, slide is so dense that we're going to need to spend some time on it. Let's get into it then. Right. Here is an example of a user journey. Screenshot this. Use this as much as you like. Um, let's go through it from one part to the next. Let's, let's take the the free funnel. Well, basically the free and the paid uh, is just the amplification of that message at the beginning. Everything else is free. Everything else is a process and a machinery is a, mach a machine-based thing and a process-based thing and a system-based thing. So let's go through it. LinkedIn outreach, a post sharing on a blog, the five signs your business is outgrowing your current systems. You can apply that to almost anything. The five reasons why... Um, why uh, Give me a so logistics. So the five reasons a logistics businesses are bleeding ten thousand dollars or more a month. I'll read that or a hundred thousand dollars a month because your customers are more than five hundred trucks. I don't know, but LinkedIn post. Hmm, I'm going to read that. 
They click into the blog post. They, they begin to follow you. They go, oh, this person actually knows what they're talking about. Then what do you do? You invite them to you provide them with a lead magnet. Lead magnet is a document, definitive guide to streamlining your X, Y, Z, or a webinar, secrets of high performing, whatever it is. Or And of course, you can also back that up with constant blog posts. So they're now engaged and they need to see usually about 10 hours of thinking time before they engage with you. The as as the, as the my background, my first business when I started in twenty when I was twenty two selling software, we put an advert in and it was all sales. It was one piece of marketing to engage the customer, and then we just phoned them, sent them brochures, uh, literally sent brochures in the mail. Uh, we'd phone them using our little you know beige colored T two hundred Telstra phone. It was yeah, I'm very old. Um, and you would sell to customers that way, selling software, uh, selling technology. Now, customers expect to be able to engage with you online for way more hours before they really want to talk to you. So give them that opportunity. Put that out there. So then the next step is they, so they, they sign up for a webinar. They receive the lead magnet. They receive some value, but they've traded that with their name and email and job title. Okay? And, and, and running events on LinkedIn is fantastic because I know exactly who's registered on, the, on LinkedIn. I know exactly who they are. We've communicated already. I've sent you a link to register for this webinar. So we're already in a conversation. And when you're ready to reach out, you go, yes, Matthew, I'm, I'm time to put my hand up. So then, you know, nurture emails. Somebody downloads an ebook from us or from one of my clients. They're going to be nurtured five or six emails over four or five weeks. Um, adding value, value, value. Of course, at the bottom of that, if you'd like to talk about it, please engage. Guide to our solution, case studies, moving into, the, as they move along to regular emails. Then stage four, they're considering options. This is where sales needs to take over. They need personalized email and phone call and contact. Obviously, we want to retarget these people. If they've engaged with us on our website, we've put a cookie on there. We've got Google retargeting or some version of retargeting going on. And they see us when they're searching around the internet, they can see our advert again. They go, oh, these guys are way bigger than I thought. I'm seeing them, seeing them everywhere. Well, there's technology behind that that drives that, that activity. And, uh, and of course, uh, email sequences. So you might have a little email sequence that gets them to sit up, take notice, take action. And of course, the sales process is underway regular contact, and then we can move to, you know, choosing a vendor, which is a proposal, proof of concept, demo or sale. Screenshot it. Don't mind. It's the execution that we get paid for. Um, speaking of execution, here's a quick report that we pulled. Um, so this is for a client, 163 leads, um, high intent leads with a partner opportunity, SQL, that's sales qualified lead. So at the top is market qualified lead. So name, rank, and serial number. And then a sales qualified lead is they've got uh, the main game. I, I, I like structures and thoughts processes. Main, M-A-I-N, money, authority, interest, need. Okay, that's the main game. And that's what these uh, 21 people have. This is for a pretty deep tech uh, compliance product as well. This is not shoes. So we don't sell shoes. Um, so just here, so far we've outperformed past performance campaigns with cost per lead of 23 to 40 times lower. Um, so you can go out and do it. And if you've got the time and energy to go and learn how to do this stuff, please don't do it blind. Um, that's very expensive. Uh, the, you know, boosting a post, taking the easy route is the, is the, is the, the equivalent of buying a chocolate in the checkout aisle at Coles or Woolies. It's not very good for you. And it's really only there to help Coles or Woolies make more money. <laughs> so, um, same with Facebook or any of those platforms. If you haven't got expertise, and you're just clicking the boost button, uh, you might as well just take that $25, 30 $50 and, uh, I don't know, buy a bottle of wine or burn it for warmth. At least you'll get some warmth out of it. Um, we'll carry on. I'm um, looking at the time. I've got another question here. Um, okay. Um, this person here is saying uh, great insights and value. Thank you. Thank you for the webinar. Um, advice on creating high engagement LinkedIn profile to drive sales for someone starting with a brand new LinkedIn. Um, let's have a conversation. That, that, that is, I did a four day course on that uh, last year and it helped people actually start, uh, close deals. So I've got lots to say on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn is amazing. Um, and I actually talk about LinkedIn later. Um, so definitely message me, please. Um, 
taking SQL means we're getting into structure query language using, yeah, yeah, SQL database, yeah. Sales qualified lead, different languages, mate. Um, so yeah, there's a, uh, there's there's always an acronym. Where, where there's a human, there's an acronym. Uh, all right, so the point of this slide is, can we do it for you or can it be done for you? Short answer is yes. As a matter whether you're in cybersecurity or AI or logistics, um, we can deploy that previous system I was just talking about to a business like yours. There's always people in the market who are looking to solve a problem that you solve. You need to make sure your, your marketing is able to get in front of their eyes, whether it's be free or pay. Okay. Um, now, as I said, we're, we're spending a lot of time. Uh, so somebody just asked, do we offer execution services? That's the only thing I get paid for um, is the execution. So yes, we do that. Well, we do the strategic part. But then, but really my whole business, I mean, if, as I said, strategy, I've just given you the strategy. Um, the execution is what Tech Talk actually does, um, where that's the expertise that we deliver. And we've done it recently, this year, in the last six months for all of these types of businesses and more. I just couldn't fit them all into one page. So the short answer is, um, will it work for my business? I've tried advertising before. Well, I can drive a car and you can probably drive a car as well. Um, but you're not getting a drive in the in a um, in a Formula One car. There's people who are just better at it. And look, don't I'm not better at it. My team are better at it. Um, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and those types of platforms are perishable skills. They they're as they're as current as the bananas in your kitchen. If um, if you haven't done a a LinkedIn or a or a Facebook campaign or or whatever other platform it might be in the last six to eight months then you're probably behind the eight ball and you need, uh, and, and the people who are doing it every single day right now are the ones that are going to run rings around you. Um, all right. Uh, I absolutely, uh, Shuhan, I think, uh, Shuhan, I don't know how to say your name, sorry. Um, short answer is love Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator is, um, I've been paying for that. Let me put it this way. I pay about $90 for it. That's how long I've been paying for it. I've been grandfathered in so long that I, I was paying, and now it's like 130, 140 bucks a month. Um, sales Navigator is amazing. So yes, use Sales Navigator. Couldn't recommend it more. Action drives attraction. Remember I'm talking about getting more people to know about you. There's three categories, one-to-one, one-to-many, referrals and word of mouth. That's it. Just those three ways. Now there's, sorry, I'm just ducking off to get a water. Um, you know, 45 minutes of just constant talking has worn me out. So the action drives attraction. You've got uh, the one to many, of course, is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck because you do something once, you deliver it. There's, uh, you know, quite a few people here on the webinar. This is also going to go on YouTube. People are going to watch it. Uh, you know, there'll be, you know, probably 50 or 80 people will watch this webinar um, on YouTube. And I, I don't even know who they are, but they know that they, they watch this and go, oh, this is valuable. So the one to many is useful. A social amplification. Excuse me. All right. Um, and referrals and word of mouth. I know you're probably already getting referrals. Do more of that. Seriously. Go out there and uh, and and create loyalty programs and generated content. Um uh, Nathan, I'm picking on you today, mate. I know you, uh, but um, Nathan, you could you could actually say, well, you know, the um, the person that uh, that that shows them using the card, um, the the uh, the most interesting networking group, or uh, you know, the um, the most interesting travel. You could say, hey, I love travel. Here's me with my uh, card on the top of Mount Kosciuszko, or and then somebody go, and then you go, well, competition this month. The number of the, the the weirdest place uh, that you've carried, you've found you're carrying your card in your back pocket. You don't know. Maybe somebody's going to be in the Empire State Building, or maybe somebody's going to be in the uh, uh, the Tower of London. I, I don't know. But then what that does is you can put that on your social and just creates that that community feel because people want to know that you've done it before. There's lots of people out there. You can go on the internet right now and find a thousand people who can say they do marketing and they say they do whatever you do. But if you can demonstrate that you've done it and you can communicate and provide a testimonials and you can provide proof, social proof that exists, you're more trustworthy. People will pay more to work with you because you've got social proof. Um, LinkedIn, love it. Love it in every every possible way. Um, top five tools to run lead gen sales navigator. Um, I'm going to assume you're talking bots uh, like automations, uh, zero. 
Um, so Adam Houlihan is the uh, the godfather of of LinkedIn. If you want to, uh, so he's the and I'm not not telling you to go and work with him. Actually, do if you want to go just do LinkedIn. Adam Houlihan's your man. I speak with him semi regularly. I asked him two weeks ago. Uh, hey mate, still getting a lot of approaches for bots. Um, what you're feeling about it? And he says the same thing that I've been saying for the last couple of years: be very um, wary because LinkedIn doesn't want bots. It's against LinkedIn's interest to have bots botting each other. Like that's not that's not what they want. They want real humans having a human interaction because if the platform gets so full of junk and nonsense that actually nobody wants to be on there anymore, then then their value goes down. So remember, Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn have an, a multiple masters. The masters are attention. How do they get attention is by VAD being interesting and valuable. How do they monetize that? By selling advertising. Uh, LinkedIn is a little bit different because they charge me and you and everybody else for, um, for, for, for access. But if you're not paying for a platform, you are the product. Let me say that again. If you're not paying for the platform, you are the product. Your data is the product. If you're on Facebook or Insta or Snap or any of those product platforms or, or you know, whatever, TikTok, you're the product. Your attention is the product that they're selling to somebody else to, to, for advertising, okay? Um, Tracy is, okay, cool, yep. Oh, Terry, see you, Terry. Um, LinkedIn, very quickly, billion members, um, complete and active LinkedIn pages have five times more impressions that's from LinkedIn. I've communicated with people inside LinkedIn as well because we do we run campaigns on it and we you know I've been around for a while. Um, and they say if you're going to sell to corporates or government, um, the more connections you have surrounding the person you want to buy, the more likely you are to sell. So if you're trying to sell to a project manager, find all the people that work with them in that department because the hallway still the hallway chat still exists. Walking down the hall, oh, I just saw this update from from John. Oh, really? I've been talking to John about his product, right? Instant validation that you're a real person and a real thing. More connections inside the same organization. It creates a buying group. Um, I don't want to get too deep down the um, uh, ABM path. Uh, that's a count based marketing path. That's a whole other. That's, that's a. It's probably two uh, two webinars. But you get the idea. More people surround your customer with connections. Just by the way, a lot of people ask me, um, should I be promoting my company page? I, you know, I'm a company. People should care about my company. Nobody cares about your company. The quick question is, the most followed um, profile is not Microsoft. It's Bill Gates. It's not Virgin. It's Richard Branson. Okay. So you as a human are more interesting, which goes back to my previous comment about bots. It's more interesting. The human is more interesting than the business. And so promote yourself. Be the, as Daniel Priestley says, the key person of influence. Be the individual who is able to um, comment, have commentary on the market. All right. We're getting uh, close to the end. Uh, once again, breaking every rule when it comes to webinars. I'm just hoping that people screenshot this or or um, will take this away. I understand that these are the content that drives action. Educational webinars, there's a reason I take time to do a webinar every month uh, for the last seven months or six months. There's a reason. It works. Um, Ebooks and guides, they can be scalable. You, you write something clever that people actually get value from advertise it, drive as much traffic as you can to that, and you'll you'll find your leads really blow up. Temp I'm not going to read them all out to you, but you get the idea. There's lots of ways, lots of ways for you to communicate with yourself, um, to communicate with your market. LinkedIn newsletters, somebody asked me about LinkedIn earlier, love LinkedIn newsletters. Um, they are amazing. Oh, just one thing on the tools in relation to LinkedIn. There are, there are tools that allow you to sort of help or prompt you to write comments Comments is a completely valid way to engage with uh, with content um, and and posts there. So if you're talking about, I'm not crapping, I'm not, not rubbishing all tools. Uh, I'm not a you know, not that guy. Uh, there is a tool called Engage. Uh, they do a good job of, um, of of sort of reading the post, providing contextual answers. But there's there's lots of those out there as well. Um, I use that one. Uh, I don't often use use it, but I have it. Um, and I need to get better at commenting, but I'm just, I'm a busy guy. Um, there's only so many things I can do. Speaking of the things I'm doing, 
I've just launched the second season of the um, the CEO and the Salesman podcast. I'm the Salesman. I interview CEOs about their the, the trials, tribulations, their triumphs, um, what they do. Um, uh, I've recorded conversations there. It's it's just started. You can see, you know, there's only eight videos up and and uh, and a few subscribers. Love you to subscribe to that. The conversations I've got coming up uh, in the future are amazing. And um, they are uh, really interesting people that I've been able to get um, have conversations with. So, but they're also content. I'm going to be able to get one of these out a week. We're going to clip it, put out a, a video every day. And this is the type of stuff. This is an activity that I can do that's going to provide greater levels of content, levels of value. I recognize my customers as a software and technology owners who want to sell more to the right people. So therefore, um, I want to provide value to those people. So therefore, I'm going to interview people who have listed companies on the ASX, who are currently mentoring uh, multiple businesses. I want to interview them, ask them some 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 tricky or not tricky, but but meaty questions that's going to help you do exactly that, sell more to the right people, how to think about it. Um, okay, so in review, have we done what we set out to do? Hang on, I've got a question to think. Um, What's in my sales toolkit? So uh, CRM. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so my so Tracy's just asking about sales toolkit in relation to. So I use um, we have uh, we outreach to people. We put them into the CRM. We email them. We invite them to webinars. That's the sort of structure. A lot of you would have arrived here today by being on my LinkedIn, being receiving an email, seeing that I'm adding value. My, all of my all of my um, Emails are about adding value. If somebody subscribes to my newsletter or comes into the, my channels, all you'll see is value. People come to me when they're ready, but all you see is value. And I do what I do. Say, hey, download this. If somebody takes a particular action, we, they might receive a different email or a call. But really, at the end of the day, people come to me uh, to help them drive their sales forward. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of um, um, I, it's almost uh, there's lots and lots of tools that I use. Uh, Trace, I'm happy to talk to you that more deeply. Um, so, uh, I'm being asked, would you recommend connecting with everyone from relating to shared interests, shared business interests, as says the, uh, sales directors, purchasing officers? Um, yes. Short answer. Yes. As long as you can add value to them, uh, connect with everybody as you like. Um, oh, thanks, Lewis. Good to see you. Um, all right, well, let's carry on. Have we, have I, have I done what I set out to do today? Have we talked about the four areas of impact? Your target market, your circle of influence, your uh, your your reputation and your relationship and your office. I think we've covered that one off pretty well. How targeting gets wrong. I think we've done that one pretty well. Why free trials don't work. Time, energy, effort, that type of stuff. Um, and paid and free lead gen. I think we've covered that uh, pretty well. Editing tool for my podcast and videos. Uh, we're currently using... Descript for the short videos and Riverside for the for the podcast themselves. So um, I think we've done our job. Quick bonus for you. If you suspect that you might be missing a certain area of those four key areas, I've built a test. Go to scorecard.techtalk.co. Uh, I won't phone you if you're scared about going through it and getting a phone call from me and getting harassed by a salesperson. That's not what's going to happen. Um, but what this is, this, this is about, about 20 questions across each one of those categories. It then identifies the areas that you're lacking, potentially lacking, and then provides you with guidance on how to solve for those areas. That's quite a cool little thing, bit of AI sitting in the background to say, well, you're doing this, therefore you can do more of these ones over here. It gives you a score. Then you can go back in a couple of months' time, redo it, and see how you see what you need to do now because often it's you know the business needs to be a, um, a it doesn't matter if the wheel is small or the wheel is big momentum is generated by having smooth wheels so if you're doing a lot of one thing but not much for the other you might find yourself having a bit of a bumpy ride so just flesh this one out now what's okay this one needs to be fleshed out just uh, that that's how i think about the the sales and marketing experience across those four key areas second bonus is uh people have already asked me about this now would you like to spend time with me? Actually going through a sales and marketing review, happy to spend some time with you. Um, that's the value that I'm offering. It's a, um, uh, I'll go through some examples, successful campaigns, some templates, and then provide you some recommendations for the next steps. Uh, and, if, and I offer that for, for nothing. It's just to make sure that it's just like, you get to test me out. Is there any, is there anything else that you want 
or need from me? Can I really add value or impact into your specific business? I know I've spoken about a lot of industries. Is there value going to be exchanged um, from there? Are there any questions, please? If you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, I know we've, uh, we're sort of over time already. Um, and if there are questions, um, I'm not going to. So if there are questions, just email me, matthew at techtalk.com.au. Happy to take you through those and answer answer those questions in those strategy sessions. Just email me if there's any content you'd like. If there's you want a copy of these slides, uh, if you want a copy of anything at all today, those documents, more than happy to share those with you as well. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to your success. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to spend with me to help you sell more to the right people. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Thanks. Have a good one.